this next patient. Case number three is a 73-year-old with memory loss. They had an MRI of the brain in 2016. First look at the DWI, there's no evidence of acute infarct. Though we actually don't have a GRE sequence or a flare sequence on this case because the patient was not able to tolerate finishing their MRI, but we do have a T2. And on that, we see that there's moderate to moderately severe cerebral atrophy with a right mesiotemporal predilection. We see the prominence and size here of the right temporal horn. And this is what the rest of the brain looks like. If you look here on the coronal images, these are the hippocampi. Um, and we see the hippocampal atrophy bilaterally, particularly on the right-hand side. There is moderate microvascular ischemic disease that we see here, um, T2 hyperintensity in the cerebral white matter. The patient also had an amyloid study in 2016, and this is diffusely positive. So you see diffuse binding of the amyloid tracer throughout the cortex. The entire brain looks dark on amyloid. This is an avidly positive exam which tells us that this patient uh, does indeed have uh, Alzheimer's. Okay, so the case number three, again, is the 73-year-old with memory loss. Here is the MRI in 2016, moderate to moderately severe atrophy with a right temporal predilection. Uh, the patient had quantitative volumetric imaging in 2016. There was some reduction in hippocampal volumes, but of note, there was statistically significant reduction in the HOC, for the patient here, the ICO brain also showed reduction of the um, hippocampal volumes and enlargement of the inferior lateral ventricles. You see here in this report that it's uh, uh, up here in the uh, pink zone, indicating that the inferior uh, lateral ventricles are significantly enlarged. Uh, this patient then had an amyloid PET in 2016. Here's the PET CT fusion images. Here's the PET MR fusion images. This is diffusely positive, so binding of that amyloid tracer throughout the cortex in this patient who has Alzheimer's disease.